Hello and welcome to the bench. A lot of water has flowed under the bridge since our last meeting at the disambiguation station. Some major things have happened on my side of the camera. We had a baby and we built a house. I hope life on your side has been treating you well too. What I have for you today is a Tessman TM510 multimeter. Ben over at Tessman reached out to me a couple weeks ago and he asked if I'd be interested in doing a review of this unit. And of course, who doesn't love a new multimeter to play with? So they sent me a couple units to try out. Now, full disclosure, this review is not paid for by Tessman, but they did provide these meters free. Uh, the opinions are mine and I'm stuck with them. Before I dig into this little device, I want to announce the channel's first giveaway. Yep, I'm giving away two of these Tessman meters to lucky viewers. Stay tuned to the end of the video for more information on how to throw your hat into the ring and snag one. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get started. Like me, you're probably wondering who Tessman is. Well, I asked a few questions about the company and they sent me a fairly long bio. So instead of reading that here, I'm just going to post it over at componentfund.com. So look up in the description for a link. In a nutshell, Tessman is a Chinese company and this is their first product to be released. As a quick summary, this is a low-cost multimeter which provides resistance, continuity, and AC and DC voltage readings. It also includes a non-contact voltage detector and a flashlight. Its price point is approximately 12 US dollars on Amazon. And I'll have a discount code up in the description if you want to buy one. And to be honest, when I first looked up this unit, I was really skeptical about the quality for this reason, because it was so cheap. But after I've taken a look at these units, I'm pleasantly surprised. The unit is auto ranging, as you can see here, and it continuously scans between the four modes of operation, AC volts, DC volts, resistance, and continuity, until it detects an input. It comes with a little nylon zippered case, has a silicone outer jacket, and it also includes two Duracell, no less, batteries, AAA, which I like AAA batteries in a meter or AA batteries because they're a little bit easier to source than a 9 volt. You usually have a few more of them lying around in a drawer, I find. The leads are soft and flexible, and I appreciate that because sometimes these cheap meters have really stiff leads that feel like a wire. These, these feel pretty nice. Let's take a look at the published specifications. And the they're included in the manual, but I'm going to put a screenshot here. So in the DC voltage range, it's rated up to 600 volts, and the accuracy at all ranges is listed at plus or minus 1% plus 5 counts. In the AC range, it's also rated at 600 volts with a listed accuracy of uh, plus or minus 1.2% plus 5 counts. The frequency range for AC is 40 hertz to 1 kilohertz. I'm going to overlook the true RMS statement for now. The minimum voltage that can be measured is 0.8 volts in both the AC and the DC ranges, and the maximum is 600 volts. But to be honest, I would not go anywhere near 600 volts with this meter. If you're working with voltages above the standard household ranges, well, let me say if you're working above low voltage, 12 volt DC or maybe 24 volts AC, you should be specially trained in safety and you should be using arc flash protection and high-end safety certified test equipment. Even 120 volt USA household current is no joke. Be careful and be educated around high voltages. For resistance measurements, it can measure up to 40 mega ohms and the accuracy is again listed at plus or minus 1.2% plus 5 counts. Anything above 50 ohms is considered to be a resistance measurement, and any resistance below 50 ohms triggers the continuity buzzer. It also includes a non-contact voltage detection circuit, which is really handy to detect the presence of AC without touching a circuit. Other features include hold, which freezes the last reading, and a large backlit display, an LED flashlight, and an auto power off, which actually can be disabled, oddly enough, if you press and hold the H button while you power up the unit. All right, enough talk. Let's put this unit to the test and see how it measures up. So for reference, I'm going to be using my Fluke 17B Plus for comparison. 
and we'll see how the measurements from these two meters compare. All right, I have my trusty Fluke 17B plus meter here, and I also have the Tessman meter, and they're both connected to the same power supply. Currently, the power supply is set to zero, so we can see a very small voltage being output and is registered on the, the Fluke. Now, the Tessman is in sort of a, an ohms mode. According to the manual, the Tessman can read voltages higher than 0 0.8 volts in both the AC and DC ranges. So at this point, since the power supply is outputting less than 0 0.8 volts, the meter assumes that we're reading a resistance. So it's giving us this strange resistance output right here. All right, so let's actually crank up the voltage to less than 0 0.5 and we'll see what happens. So as you can see, we're moving upward slowly. So at 0 0.59 volts, we don't have a reading yet. We're in auto ranging. So let's keep moving slowly upward until we reach approximately 0 0.8 volts. There we go. So about 0 0.81 volts, the meter is reading 0 0.814, which is pretty daggone close to the Fluke 17B+. Okay, I'm satisfied that that's accurate. All right, let's raise the voltage. We'll go up to 5 volts. And there is a really close to 5 volts, and it looks like the Fluke and the Tessman are very close to each other. 4.97 versus 4.96. Alright, I'm going to raise the voltage now to, let's say, 12 volts to simulate like a car battery. go. Twelve volts. So the fluke registers will eleven point nine eight volts and the testman registers twelve point zero zero. Let's see if we and there I've pushed it to twelve point zero zero on the fluke. Yep. And point zero two. So we're about two hundredths of a volt different. Not that that's going to matter. All right, now let's go to 24 volts. There, 24.04. So, not, not bad. All right, that looks great. I'm going to just max out the, the power supply and see what we get. So my power supply goes up to about 31.59. And we're reading 31.64. So it appears that the higher we go, we become a little more inaccurate. All right, so there are some examples of voltage readings in the DC ranges. I think the meter looks reasonably good. All right, let's do some resistance tests. So I have here a standard 1K quarter watt resistor. Let's measure with the fluke first and see what we get. I'm getting almost exactly 1K ohm. All right, now let's measure with the Tessman. You can see it immediately starts ranging there, and now we have 0 0.994. So that's pretty close. All right, let's move to a different resistance. Let's go with 100K. Now this is uh, supposed to measure resistances up to 40 mega ohms. So let's go with this 100K here.
The fluke says 99.6k. And the testman says 99.8k. All right. Here is a 10K resistor. Let's check that one. 9.78, not going up, 9.8382, 9.82K. And then for the testman, 9.82, wow, exactly, all right. Okay, here's a 1.5 mega ohm resistor. Here's the fluke reading. One point four nine four. And the testman reading. One point four nine seven. Finally, let's go with a four point seven meg. This is the largest one I could find in my box of resistors. Let's go with the fluke first. Four point nine four, four point nine two, four point nine five. Looks all right to me. Now, of course, we have to disassemble the unit to see how it's designed, so let's pop the back off here. First, we'll pull off the rubber which is kind of a nice cover. It's soft and easy to take off. Let's pull the battery cover screw out first. And as I said before, I like the fact that it has two AAA batteries rather than a nine volt. Makes it easier to change out. Usually there's more AAA batteries rolling around in the drawer than there are nine volt batteries. So those pop out that way. And they did include Again, I said they included Duracell, which I was surprised about. Usually they include an off-brand cheap battery with something like this, so I was pleased about that. And there are four screws in the corners. cover off and what you'll notice immediately is that the battery compartment is connected by these two springs to the battery compartment on the back cover no wires going to the back cover and then here is the circuit itself our buzzer is at the top looks like we have a single chip blob which probably means they're using a standard multimeter chip here to make it inexpensive I'm sure they didn't design a custom chip for this now, one other thing that stands out to me right away is that there is no fusing protection on the input side of this meter. So this should tell you right away it's not a good idea to use this meter with high voltages. Now, this meter operates in high impedance mode because it only measures volts, ohms, and continuity. So it never conducts a lot of current through the meter. But if there were a short of some sort, inside the meter, say it got wet or a piece of metal or something got dropped in here and shorted something together, we don't know where the failure would occur without a fuse. Having a fuse basically guarantees that the failure will occur within the fuse rather than within the meter or within the leads attached to the meter. So I would avoid high voltages with this meter at all costs. Now remember, even a car battery can contain enough potential to cause fires and damage possibly even injury. All right, let's test out the non-contact voltage sensing feature. So the sensing bar is at the top of here, and you'll notice that when we take the cover off and look at the circuitry. So I'm going to put it into non-contact voltage mode. It says NCU. Now, as I, I have a cable here. This is just an AC cable that's connected to the mains at 120 volts. So if I hold it near, it starts to detect it. 
when the backlight comes on it's sort of it's hard to see. So holding it somewhat close we get a low voltage detection. We're holding it near the, the wire here. And then holding it near the plug we get a high voltage. The light turns red and we see a H on the screen. Holding it just near the cable would give us a, a low detection. But at least it can see that there is AC voltage in that line. That's quite helpful when you're working on uh, circuitry like a switch or an, a receptacle. Making sure you've turned off the correct circuit breaker. So, to summarize, I think this is a great little meter for hobbyist work, and I think it would be handy to have it in a pinch for continuity and voltage testing. The non-contact uh, detector makes it a nice safety check if you're working on your home uh, wiring and you want to make sure you remember to turn off the circuit breaker or that you got the right circuit breaker. I definitely would not use it for high voltage work or anything over uh, 12 to 24 volts DC, probably, and low currents. It's reasonably accurate, and I think it's very inexpensive for the number of features provided. As long as you avoid high voltages, I think this unit provides a good value for the price. The main thing that disappointed me was the lack of current measurements, but since it's an auto-ranging meter and it's always operating in high impedance mode, it would have really been more difficult to add uh, current measurements without adding switching circuitry and more protection, and it would increase the price and the complexity of the unit. So my final thought is if you need a very basic secondary meter to toss in your glove box or your work bag, this little meter might do the trick. Now for the moment you've all been waiting for, the giveaway. I'm going to give away two of these meters to lucky viewers. How can you have a chance to win one? Well, it's simple. Just subscribe to the channel, like the video, and leave a comment letting me know that you want to win it. After some time, I'll pick two lucky winners and contact you to arrange shipping. Also, be sure to check the description for fine print, because remember, the large print giveth, and the fine print taketh away. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.